Hi, this is Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that spotlights the stars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So sit back, relax, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. I couldn't think of a better way to usher in Christmas than with my guest today on the Someone You Should Know podcast. I have known this guy since the original Someone You Should Know days. Will you please welcome my friend, comedian, Haywood Banks. Haywood, welcome aboard, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rick. I was just looking at uh, some photos here. The last time I actually saw you was at the Hobart Art Theater just before COVID. It was it was February 29th, 2020, just before COVID back in those oh, yeah. days. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my God. I was just thinking about that because Leslie said, didn't we see him just before COVID? I'm going, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wanted, <laughs> wanted to share something with you. Leslie and I stumbled across something on YouTube I wanted to share with you and for listeners um, I, I stumbled across the HBO Young Comedy Special, and I'm guessing based on the hairstylings of Paul Rodriguez, who was the host there, it's got to be late 80s, early 90s. When did your, uh, yeah. Yeah, when did your comedy routine actually start? When did you actually start actually as a stand-up comic? Uh, well, I, I started out as a folk singer. Okay. And, uh, I uh, dropped out of school when I was 20. I dropped out of college and <clears throat> hit the road to be a folk singer, and I and I – I was class clown and whatever, you know, I've always, you know, my brain just, you know, works in, in mysterious <laughs> ways and like everybody else's. And, uh, and the first songs I ever wrote were funny songs. So it's, um, you know, I just went on the road to try, you know, cause there was, there was really, there was no comedy clubs back in those days, right, yeah. you know, and, and there was really no template to do anything in show business, you know, <laughs> other than go, going to musical theater or so, but I was a folk singer for like, uh, <laughs> probably 12, 12, 13 years. And um, I was doing funny stuff in between because it was like the disco era. And I, I, you know, I didn't want to play staying alive and, you know, (laughs) you know, what other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so um, I was doing funny stuff in between the songs, you know, when I play, I play like a, a mountain jacks, which is like a, you know, a chain restaurant that has fish and seafood. And they had a, a bar that was like the holding tank for people waiting to go in to eat. <laughs> and uh, there'd be a little, you know, uh, you know, foot high stage in the corner. And, uh, you know, me and, you know, a number of other guys, you know, would rotate through there and you'd play four, four 45 minute sets a night, six nights a week. Oh my. Or week after week. And, um, and I'd I'd been uh, I got married and I had uh, uh, two small kids and um, I would you know I'd play like a, a a club someplace and I would make four hundred dollars and then you know on the weekend I make two hundred dollars a night on the weekend drive home pay four three hundred forty three dollars and forty one cents for our, our mortgage <laughs> and then not work for like two weeks and my wife somehow fed us and clothed us on uh you know on uh on 60 bucks a, a, for, for a, wow. a month so but it, it got to it got to point one so one day she she says uh, why don't you you know it's like i didn't have any you know there's big spaces of time where you don't have any work so i she said well why don't you go up to the comedy club in lansing michigan and uh you know do something up there you know and so i went up on a uh you know open mic night and uh, i just took out the serious songs out of my show that i've written and just left the funny things in and and the and the jokes and they immediately hired me for that weekend wow wow as a uh, as a middle and then like two weeks later i headlined the club and i just kind of went went on from there (laughs) so your wife was the prophet (laughs) oh yeah oh definitely it's go forth (laughs) go forth and spread comedy (laughs) well it was was like you know i i liken it to uh in the matrix you know when neo's uh uh dead you know from from fighting in the uh in the matrix or whatever and and trinity his girlfriend comes up and kisses him like uh the prince in snow white mm-hmm. and he, you know and he wakes up and she says now get up <laughs> <laughs> it's the same kind of uh you know uh you know inspirational all right can you think back to the very first comedy song you wrote uh, um, it's, it's hard. I can't think of any of the comedy, the early comedy stuff that I did because I know there was it just it just came flooding in when I started. I couldn't remember which one was first. But how about you? Yeah, it's, uh, 
I, I had, I had this, I remember, I think I was about 16 or something, 15 or 16. I wrote, uh, me love's locked up in me frigidaire. It'll be a year today. She said, I'd never keep her, but she's kept quite well, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> good, <laughs> you know, just, one, good one, good one, good one, good one. You got a brand new album out for the holidays, new holiday standards. From that album, we're going to feature one that's relatively new. I think this one came out like last year, Scandinavian Baby. Can you give us the yes. background on that one? Uh, well, I, I, I try sometimes to to write a song. It's it's um, you might take a, a most in, especially in Christmas songs. I like to kind of deconstruct and reconstruct some some concept. And uh, one is that you know the the portrayal of uh, Jesus, you know in in every uh, in every picture you ever see. So, mm-hmm. so I kind of deconstruct, you know, it's, it's the same with, uh, uh, I took, uh, Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer and turned it into Rudy, the red, o- red nose, bioluminescent rhinitis caribou. <laughs> Re- wrote, <laughs> yeah. uh, Rudy, the radioactive bioluminescent rhinitis caribou. <laughs> and kind of a, uh, kind of a, before the, uh, before the band kind of thing, you know. <laughs> right, real good. Tell you what, let's go ahead and feature that one right now on the Somebody You Should Know podcast. My guest today, Haywood Banks, his album is called New Holiday Standards, and here is Scandinavian Baby on the Someone You Should Know podcast. She was going into labor when they checked into the stable, that black-haired, brown-eyed woman and her black-haired, brown-eyed man. Oh, and when that baby came, it was a miracle, they all exclaimed A miracle that night In that old little town of Bethlehem Cause they all saw a Scandinavian baby in the manger It looked just like a sweet and swaddling clothes A fin was in the cradle Playing with a dreidel the sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know We've seen pictures of the baby when he was all grown up In Bible illustrations and the TV shows Blonde hair, blue eyes and a toga Like a frat boy from Minnesota The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know Mary said, Joe, we need to talk, you see an angel Flew into my room, she did explain Long story short, she said, now listen, hon That's how we got a blonde-haired, blue-eyed son Joseph said, Jesus She said, ooh, I like that name Cause they all saw a Scandinavian baby in the manger Looked just like a sweet in swaddling clothes A fin was in the cradle, playing with a dreidel The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know We've seen pictures of the baby when he was all grown up In Bible illustrations and the TV shows Blonde hair, blue eyes and Birkenstocks Like the manager of the Copenhagen Food Co-op The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know Well, it's hard to put one over on three wise men Maybe one or two, but never three they brought frankincense as a baby gift Should have brought Swedish meatballs in a covered dish Joseph said, but this is my son And they all said, there's no way Cause they all saw a Scandinavian baby in the manger It looked just like a Swede in swaddling clothes A fin was in the cradle, playing with a dreidel The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know in pictures of the baby when he was all grown up In Bible illustrations and the TV shows They all said, hey Maria, he could work at the Dubai Ikea The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know At the Sermon on the Mount, the crowd that gathered there Had never seen a Scandinavian, it's true But none could forget the voice they heard when Jesus spoke those immortal words. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Cause they all saw a Scandinavian baby in the manger. It looked just like a sweet and swaddling clothes. A fin was in the cradle, playing with a dreidel. A sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know. We've seen pictures of the baby when he was all grown up In Bible illustrations and the TV shows One hair, blue eyes and a toga 
Like a frat boy from Minnesota The sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know Blonde hair, blue eyes and a toga The Alpha Omega from Minnesota That sweet Norwegian Jesus we all know Great new music from Haywood Banks, Scandinavian Baby, from his new album <laughs> called New Holiday Standards. What's Christmas like or the holidays like at, at uh, your house? Any particular traditions that uh, stand, uh, stand the test of time? Uh, well, um, mainly it's me uh, cursing at putting up the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, my my wife, we, we have a... Uh, a back room that has a 16 foot ceiling and my wife always wants a 17 foot tree. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, so I, for, for years I decorated, I'm six foot three and uh, I would decorate a, uh, a 16 foot tree with a, a six foot ladder. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're still but, short. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so, so you kind of have to decorate the tree before you put it. <laughs> Well, you know, here, see, you know, here's the, here's the funny thing about that. You're talking about a six foot ladder on that comedy special. You kept on emphasizing this is not a step. This is yeah. not a step. Yeah. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> see, yeah. Yeah. it's the that, circle that of important. comedy. I, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all it, it all translates into something from something else. Yeah. All right, very good. So uh, we're getting re- well. Actually, we're into the winter season now. We've got snow, slush, and salt all over the streets. So the most apropos song I could think of is "Wiper Blades." I'm Beautiful. guessing were you were you just happen to, like, to be sitting in traffic when you came up with this song, or maybe just uh, heading out to <laughs> to a comedy gig when you see your uh, your car completely covered with snow and ice? Yeah, and I, you know, some sometimes songs are come from just one little thought like i i was actually there's a uh a cranberry song i think they were the cranberries and they had the girl was going uh, 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 yeah. uh, <laughs> zombie and, and i don't zombie, know what it was yeah, yeah zombie and <laughs> and yeah and i was i was sitting i was sitting there you know and the uh wiper blades were going on while that was going i going my whipper whipper <laughs> you know so it just like you know it came from that little wow. little uh seed and i i you know, put it into an entire song. Wonderful. We're going to feature that one right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast with a reminder to make sure you check your wiper blades <laughs> before you head on out today yeah. on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Oh, winter's here with all the ice and snow and the surly slush upon the road. Oh, oh. The salty spray upon my window makes me wish that I'd replace my wiper blades. My whipper, whipper, whipper blades. My whipper, whipper, whipper blades. My whipper, whipper, whipper blades. I wish that I'd replace my wiper blades. Salty spray from semis that do pass. They turn my windshield into bathroom glass. I turn the knob, but I come to the conclusion that I did not fill up my washer solution. My whipper, whipper, whipper fluid. My whipper, whipper, whipper fluid. My whipper, whipper, whipper fluid. I wish that I'd replace my wiper fluid. my wiper blades down the expressway 80 mph i can make out headlights daylights frosted shapes but down by the dash is a clearing where both blades do scrape i can see fine if i lay on the passenger seat my whipper 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 blades my whipper 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 blades my whipper 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 blades Said I'd replace my wiper blades. My whipper, whipper, whipper blades. My whipper, whipper, whipper blades. One time on delay. My whipper. Wiper. Wiper. 
wiper blades. I wish that I'd replace my wiper blades. Great song, by the way. I mean, I know that's strange. If just trying to narrow down five songs. No, normally, uh, my guests get only three songs, but because it's you, we're, we're narrowing it oh. down to five songs because oh, good. because uh, you know it, the thing is. I remember, of course, Toast was the very first one that exposed me to you on the Bob and Tom show. But the ones that I really and truly loved were uh, One I Know. I loved that one. Dead Guys. And the thing is, musically, those are still good songs, even if you take the comedy out. You know, <laughs> so so kudos and props to you there, buddy. So, well, that's that's the thing. I try, um, you know, you know, who Tom Lear is. Of course. Yes. You know, to, Tom Lear is a. Uh, for people that don't know, he's a, a uh, he was a math professor at uh, MIT, and he was also a, a great piano player, like classical piano mm-hmm. player. And, and back in the 50s, he had a, a series of albums out, one, An Evening Wasted with Tom Lear. It was one, was one that I was given when, like when I was 14. And his whole uh, concept of the, of the um of writing a song was a, a a beautiful melody to subvers with subversive lyrics and that's and that's kind of been the template so that you know if if somebody thinks you know it's like oh if they they find themselves humming you know uh my wiper you know they and then they realize it's about wiper blades or <laughs> <laughs> or, or a song about the pancreas or dust mites. Oh, yeah, or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't feature your magnum opus, your Stairway to Heaven, the classic <laughs> Toast. <laughs> Origins of, of the Toast, where did that come from? Were you just maybe just uh, sitting there waiting for a bagel to pop out and all of a well, sudden, <laughs> where, where did this come from? Actually, you know, you, you were talking about when you first started doing comedy, how things just like, you know, flooded out. When I, when I first transitioned into the character of of haywood you know it's like when you're when you're a kid and you're wearing your favorite shirt to school and somebody goes oh man why are you wearing that shirt and you have to go oh my mom made me wear it you know Mm -hmm. it's like slowly as you go through life you know pieces of your true self get get trimmed off so you can kind of fit into you know as a cog into society and um but as a as this as the character of Haywood, I could be anything, and I could be you know get into people's faces and do stuff that I never would do you know trying to be a uh, you know respectable gentleman. And um, I I went to you know I was I was straight, it was the time when the, people were doing a lot of um, performance art, right, and yes. <laughs> so I I thought well. One, you know, I was going through the Salvation Army or something, and I found a toaster. I said, oh, maybe I can make toast on stage. And uh, so I, I had a big suitcase full of props and stuff, so I had the toaster there. And I was in uh, New Jersey at a uh, uh, a disco in this – no, it was, it was in New York, in the South Bronx. It was a, a disco in the basement – or a, a comedy club in the basement of a disco that – this was 19 – uh, 80 and they still thought it was 1972 you know with uh, uh staying alive upstairs mm-hmm. and um i was just i was middling and so i was waiting to go on and so i'm just like i've got the toaster and i'm just like tapping i'm going coast yeah around the country and coast to coast people ask me what i like most i don't want to brag i don't want to boast i always say well i like toast yeah <laughs> you know yeah toast. you know it's just like, just like came into my head and so i went stage and that's the first thing i did and the audience just loved it and then they hated everything i did after oh, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword <laughs> oh so i thought well gee maybe i should move this towards the end of the show wow yeah <laughs> encore that's the encore song now isn't it yeah yeah it is and, well here's, but, here's, a, here's a question for you since you use a you use forks out there on, on your toaster and such is there a specific tuning fork that you use to make sure that it's in tune it's a, it's a, they're, they're all, they're all forks. <laughs> they're all tuning forks. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Let's go ahead and play it. I know you've been thinking about it. I know you've probably heard it in the past. It would not be the same without hearing the classic toast from Haywood Banks on the Someone You Should Know podcast. All around the country, coast to coast. <laughs> People always say, what do you like most? I don't want to brag, I don't want to boast. I always tell them I like toast. <laughs> yeah, toast! Yeah, toast! 
I get up in the morning about 6 a.m. Have a little jelly, have a little jam. Take a piece of bread, put it in the slot. Push down the lever and the wires get hot to get toes. Now there's no secret to toasting perfection There's a dial on the side and you make your selection Push to the dark or the light and then if it pops too soon Press down again, make toast Yeah, toast! Toast! When the first caveman drove in from the dregs I didn't know what would go with the bacon and the eggs Must have been a genius, got it in his head. Plug the toaster in the wall, buy a bag of bread, make toast. (laughs) Yeah, toast! (laughs) Oh, oui, monsieur, bonjour, coquette. Oh, croissant de Chevy Corvette. (laughs) Maurice Chevalier, Eiffel Tower. Oh, oui, ma river, get bonsoir. In Chicago, or where the heck I am right now. <laughs> yeah, dog! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Toast. The classic Toast from Haywood Banks. He's my guest today on the Somebody You Should Know podcast. Prior, I, prior to modern technology, when I was writing for the All-Star Comedy Network, I always had a pad or two of paper by the bedroom and the bathroom. It always seemed to be two places where <laughs> wow. I always came up with my comedy. And that, and wow. that was <laughs> – I was wondering, did you have anything similar to that? <laughs> are, you say, are you saying that stuff just came out of you? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Just hit your ride on a star there. Absolutely. Just during the time of oh, – wow. <laughs> time of <laughs> – Time of you uh, leave the crap I'm writing these. <laughs> these are crappy jokes. <laughs> I was wondering, did you ever do you keep a notepad with you just about anywhere? They just come anywhere. Or, I know te- technology has changed. Did you keep a little pocket recorder, or what did you do? Uh, well, all you know, every possible thing. You know, I've you know, you know, piles of scraps of paper that I try every once in a while. I try and you know condense them onto my computer. But yeah, it's uh, like for writing comedy, it's like you're. Your your brain has a uh, like puts an antenna up, and to to catch those things out of the ether or just random thoughts, things that people say, things you hear hear that you know could be moved into something. It's it's like it. I I liken it to if you like buy a Volkswagen, and all of a sudden you see all the Volkswagens on the road, mm-hmm. and say in the same way with with comedy. It's like when you know because that's your man, especially you know like as you know if that, if that's your job then your brain is tuned into that frequency. It's like, okay, what, you know, and you try and point it at everything, you know, oh, here's a, uh, here's a uh, uh, blender. What can I write about that? What can I uh, talk about? Uh, Here's the car repair. Here's the, you know, and, and just, you know, try and, uh, you know, formulate something from that. But I, I, for me, for, especially for writing songs, I found that being older, it's actually, easier to to write stuff because i have more to draw on right right you know, you know it's, uh, it's strange uh, uh hey what uh, uh, leslie hates it when i sing along with songs because i often change the lyrics and it's because <laughs> i don't have the greatest hearing to start with any elton john song could be anything in my realm because uh, uh because i don't hear i don't hear things properly and and that's how a lot of my comedy jokes came to be or comedy songs came to be was just because I misheard something. And Ingvall always told me uh, comedy is nothing more than 15 degrees off normal. And uh, and that's that's always been kind of a true to me as far as any time I would write a song. I usually ruin the songs for Leslie now. But it, it is it is one of those things where she's just, don't you even sing along with a Sting song. You know? Well, you know, and, and I, I think the degrees... Uh, uh, the degrees are are changing. Uh, maybe Ingvall's fifteen off of normal, but there's other people. You know, Andy Kaufman, one hundred eighty. One hundred eighty. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, that's, yeah. It's like there, there's just anything that's not normal. You know, right. I, I, 
I think the thing is that people want to be surprised. I like I like comedy that like surprises you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it. You know, I'm I'm an old man now. I'm I'm 72, which is a uh, a lifelong goal to be uh, room temperature. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm using that in 10 years, pal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. But it's, you know, it's like when you're 53, you're the same, uh, you know, the same age as the length of a truck, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> but uh, great. I'm mean, running around looking for 62s everywhere. I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I broke Roger Maris's record. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> 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 well, this next thing I wanted to talk to you about is something that uh, every person I've had on or any any interview I've had along the years, uh, it's all about those funny moments of getting, or actually it necessarily wasn't funny at the time, but it's the it's called uh, Tales from the Road, and it, it's all those infamous road stories of getting to a gig, something that happened at a gig, uh, weird accommodations, uh, weird places that you've played a gig. Uh, anything coming to mind off the off the top of your head, uh, Haywood? You know, every place you go, it's what fresh hell is this, as Dorothy <laughs> Parker said, you know, and playing a, like a corporate event when you get up on stage, they've got an eight-foot stage, and there's a... Uh, a 30 foot dance floor in front of you and then people in you know at the first people at ta- at round tables are like you know 40 50 feet away from you oh wow that's getting hard in yeah. some cavernous place you know it's it's like next to impossible to do that but you have to go well you know i got the check what what, <laughs> what, <laughs> Good one. what yeah. uh, years ago I, I did a gig for um for the kroger pharmacist and this guy who was like who hired me and i was it was in cincinnati and uh he had I, I was playing in cincinnati i was playing in dayton and this guy came to my show for like like almost two years saying oh you gotta you know you got to come play this, this, this would be great. People are going to love it. And so he, so he got up and, you know, it's like, I, I started playing in, I started playing in bars and people don't listen to you in bars. You have to do something. You know, that's what, that's why I wrote, uh, you know, like, excuse me, your forehead's on fire or, or, <laughs> or flies on something, you know, because I was playing up and it pulled it, like it, and, 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 and you know, to just do something to get people's attention. So it's like, it doesn't bother me. It's like, yeah, I've, I've played a lot of places where you can hear a pin drop, but you know, it's, if people are talking, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm goal oriented, you know, the checks, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's the big thing as far as I go. Hey, okay. I'm done with my set. Who's got my check. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, anyway, so I, so I played and there were a whole, you know, a whole lot of young, uh, uh, pharmacists there, like people in their, you know, 21 or 22 and they're, you know, they're the, you know, they're the company party. Everybody hates a company party and they're, you know, in the back drinking and, you know, and kind of talking. And, um, after the show, the guy comes up and, and says, Oh, I'm so sorry. The people talk during your show. I said, Oh, don't worry about it. It's like, it doesn't bother me a bit. So he, he, so he came to see me again, like two or three times, you know, after that and said, listen, will you please come back? I'm so sorry. You went, you know, about, you know, people talking and stuff. So I said, sure. You know, it was like, it was like I don't know. It was like, you know, a nice check. So I'm sure I'll come back and play. So I come back and play the next year and there is not, a sound in the room and there is not a, a laugh, a oh, no. Twitter a hitter, <laughs> nothing. There is just, I mean, I go through the whole show and you know, I mean, you could take, if you don't have, if you don't have laughter in a show, you can, you could condense a, an hour show into about 35 minutes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know? what, what were they on? Were they on their own meds or what? Was no, it? no, no. They, so it just, so so afterwards, it just occurred to me that this guy had bitched these people out. Oh, no. And said, how dare you? Said, hey, what is a, you know, really great comedian. Oh, and you they pay any respect to him, and I'm not putting up with that. And so they just said, okay, Whoa. well, you know. <laughs> so... Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to feature another song here, and this is for all the guys who have had gone shopping during the holiday season. We're all in it together, guys. This song is called Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Haywood, uh, the concept, did this happen while you were out shopping? 
Uh, no, actually, actually, I wrote this for my son. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you get your, you know, he's when you get your first girlfriend. <laughs> oh gosh! Okay. okay, here it is right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. I want to play a song for all the guys here. Like a graphic novel, your life used to be crazy. Rocking the microphone, all guns are blazing. Mm-hmm. You meet a hot chick and she really rocks your scene. Next thing you know, you wake up from the dream and you're at Bed Bath and Beyond. You're at Bed Bath and Beyond. You're at Bed Bath and Before you know it, you're talking coupons. <laughs> Used to be your life was all testosterone. Oh, 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 oh. You had ink up the pythons were bad to the bone. Oh, 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 oh. You had planes to catch, you had blood to bleed. Next thing you know, you wake up from the dream and you're at Bed Bath and Beyond. You're picking out window treatments. Bed Bath and Beyond and scented candles. Bed Bath and Before you know it, you're talking thread count. <laughs> Skydive, jump, extreme endurance. Have to stop because of insurance. Oh, wow. Oh. Death cage match with bears and vipers. Get permission from your wife first. Oh, oh, oh. Fast and furious midnight racing outs. Minivan decaf and sunscreen. Oh, oh, oh. Rage metal rap out Psycho Slayer. Now you pump the treble on John Mayer. You are like a vicious pit bull named Barracuda. Growling with no collar and never to be neutered. Mm-hmm. Faster than a trainer can say shake, roll, sit. You're licking at the leash with a cone around your neck and you're at Bed Bath and Beyond. You're picking up potpourri. Bed Bath and Beyond and bed skirts. Bed Bath and Before you know it, you're holding a purse. All right, that's for all the guys who have gone shopping with the ladies this holiday season, Bed, Bath, and Beyond. From Haywood Banks, my guest uh, today on the Summit You Should Know podcast, wishing everyone out there a very happy holiday season. If it's Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, or uh, Hanukkah, whatever it might be, we wish you all the best. What's in the works for 2023, Haywood? Uh, well, just more gigs. I've, I've, uh, I've signed with a, uh, a company called 800 Pound Gorilla, and they're, they're promoting <laughs> my... They're promoting my songs on, uh, like my Christmas album, and all, in fact, all my albums are on Spotify and Pandora, and a uh, uh, whole lot of stuff is going to be on um, uh, Sirius XM. They're playing, they're playing stuff on the kids' channel too. So ev- I'm, evidently, I'm a kids. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I, I was, I would say, you know, I'm an adult show. You can bring kids to. You know, they're not my oh, kids. Yeah. What? I'm, you know, it's like a ticket's a ticket. <laughs> I always kind of wonder about how many kids walk away from your shows and start banging on toasters and other appliances. You know, <laughs> oh my god, the, the number of kids that have won their talent contest all over the world, all over the English speaking and probably beyond world, uh, using toast. You know, from from elementary school to uh, middle school, high school. Their church camp, their scout camp, their just whatever camp, you know, they have won the talent contest, and one of those little creeps has sent me a nickel. <laughs> you no, know, and uh, and that was my whole retirement, you know. And and not only they didn't send me any money, but they never even they <laughs> they have no idea. People have no idea it's it's my song. Oh yeah, you're thinking if they, you you stole it from some kid. That's shame on oh, you. <laughs> oh, I I had a waitress come up to me after a show one time and said she got in an argument with a guy who said that his friend Billy wrote toast in 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 fifth grade and why is this old man singing? 
Oh, gosh. All right, buddy. So let's, uh, best links to, uh, you mentioned uh, Spotify, Apple Pod. Uh, you're all over the place as far as your, your music wise. How about, uh, yeah, the, yeah, how about yeah. date, tour dates and such? HaywoodBanks.com? Main thing, I, all I can think of off my top of my head, I'm playing uh, Ann Arbor at the Arc in, in um, Ann Arbor, Michigan at the Arc at, in uh, January, January 21st. And and I've got all my all my dates will be at, at HaywoodBanks.com, Haywood with an E, H E Y W O D. Yeah, dot com, and uh, um, and if you want a uh, good old fashioned CD, I will be glad to sign the CD for you. They're they're all available on the site. You know, sometimes you know it makes a great coaster or a skeet, or uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you if you live in a in a northern climate, you need something to clean your windshield. You know, there you, you can't you, you can't don't need, download blades, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to wrap up the show with another one from New Holiday Standards. You ain't getting deadly, squad. Hopefully that's oh, yeah. not the case. Hey, with, thanks so much for being a guest on my Someone You Should Know podcast. I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Good luck with the plumber and your cable. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> thanks, Rick. It's so nice to talk to you. God bless your brother. Take care, and we wish you the very best, and we hope to see you sometime in 2023. Okay, thank you. Hey, kids, gather around. Haywood's got a little song for you here. Oh, I just got a message from old St. Nick way up in Christmas land. And he says the toys for good girls and boys are being made as planned. There's a truck for little Billy and a dolly for Molly, dear. But you ain't getting diddly squat Cause you're really messed up this year No, you ain't getting diddly squat Cause you're really messed up this year Oh, the winter fields are white with snow And the lights are shining bright And the wee little heads tuck up in beds Dream of sugar plums this night you may dream of big red apples and candy canes so near, but you ain't getting diddly squat cause you're really messed up this year. No, you ain't getting diddly squat cause you're really messed up this year. When your mother asked you to wash the dishes, why you said no, no, no. And you would not pick up your socks, so it's Casera, horse face, ho, ho, ho. Oh, you know that Santa's watching you, and he keeps a great big list. But when I tell him the things you do, he really will be mad. When you sit upon his knee, he'll knock you on your ear, cause you ain't getting diddly squat, cause you're really messed up this year. Oh, you ain't getting diddly squat. Cause you really messed up, oh, you really messed up, oh, you really messed up this year. Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.